I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're at the 2011 New York Amp Show at Cower Guitars with Doug Cower. Doug, how's it going? Good. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. So you've got a few new guitars here to show us. Yeah. You want to tell us about the one you we just heard? Yeah, this is uh, uh, our Daylighter Junior, and this is a little bit of a special run. We did a, a limited run of five of these for Micah Tops. This is actually, I think, the first or the second one we put together uh, just in time for the show. But normally our Junior model is kind of our bare bones, you know, stripped down rock and roll guitar. They're usually in, uh, you know, kind of these TV black, TV yellow type finishes. Um, this is actually our Express. It's a two pickup version of the same guitar. But we tried to build a guitar that was just, you know, a pure bare bones workhorse guitar that we could have a lot of fun with doing odd colors and odd combinations. And, um, you know, usually with just a, a Wolf Tone P90 or a Wolf Tone Humbucker um, that are wound to our specs. And, they're great. They they weigh about seven, seven and a half pounds. They balance perfect, and they're just perfect in your face rock and roll guitars. Cool. Now, what are the woods used on these typically? Uh, we use Spanish cedar pretty much exclusively. Um, occasionally, we'll do different caps, but generally speaking, they're just slabs slabs of Spanish cedar, Spanish cedar neck. Um, you know, just kind of straight mahogany s guitars. Now, cedar is pretty unusual for an electric guitar. It's uh, pretty common in tops on acoustics, but what made you choose that for your solid bodies? Well, Spanish cedar's mahogany. It's a, it's a misnamed mahogany, and it's just kind of an a unknown thing in the guitar world. Um, a few builders overseas turned me on to it, and a few guys in the U.S. use it, and it's pretty common for classical guitar necks. And we, we were using more traditional African and, and what was available to us for Honduran mahoganies. And we liked the tone, but we really didn't like the weight, especially. And Spanish cedar would shave a quarter of the weight off the guitar. I mean, the junior and African mahogany was closer to 9, 10 pounds, and, and now they're 7 pounds. And they're just huge sounding because of a big, warm mid-range. Uh, there just wasn't a single trade-off that we didn't like. So we've been using it exclusively ever since. Wow, that's really cool. And Spanish cedar is easier to get? Not the same. It's a little easier than Honduran. Nowhere as easy as African. Um, it's it's one of those things that since so few people use it in any trade, they don't import a lot of it. So we go through and we, we buy everything we can and we throw out what's not to spec for us and uh, you know set the rest aside and let it season in the shop till we're ready for it. All right, Doug. Now, when you built this new model with the Formica top, did mm -hmm. you find that that changed the tone at all? Not really. It, it's we we tried to build it exactly the same as a normal junior. So it's it's full solid. There's no chambering. There's nothing under the top. And to kind of offset the fact that we basically glued plastic to the front of it, we did a satin finish, no grain fill back. It's a very, I mean, it's basically almost an oil finish. It's super thin. And uh, we played it side by side with a normal junior. And, and a little difference in the bottom end, but you know, it's almost the same difference you hear from two different pieces of Spanish cedar. It's it's very difficult to pinpoint what was what, and and uh, you know the the satin finish I'm sure helps kind of offset that. So let's take a look at the tuners on back there, sure. because those are pretty unusual looking. What kind are those? Those are uh, oh, sorry, those are uh, Spurzel sound locks. They're they're open back tuner and they're they're brilliant. They're really lightweight, very precise, and they actually work. They're like a Clouse and split post. But what they did, which I think is the greatest idea in the last 50 years for these, the string actually passes all the way out the back, and you just cut it off flush there. So you don't have to measure out two tuners passed and cut it, and then you always have one that's got way too many wraps on it. And the other thing they do is they drill these four so that the hole is actually, and it's tough to see, but it's in the side of the tuner. So you push the string through, and then you run it through the slot just before you pull it tight. And then that way, in a half a turn, it's wrapped over itself and locked it in place. They're, they're brilliant. So we, we do these pretty much standard. We do the lockings for no upcharge, but 99% of what we send out the doors with these. Everybody loves them. So. Cool. Now, you mentioned that the pickups on most of your guitars are wolf tones. For people who aren't familiar with those, are they pretty much just vintage style? He, yeah, wolf makes the whole gamut. I mean, they make all kinds of different pickups. We went through the entire lineup that he makes, uh, made notes, tried everything, made notes on what we liked, what we didn't like, which was very few things. And... Spanish cedar has kind of its own voice, so we had to work a little bit, but the pickups that we came up with, just unbelievable. We use the exact same ones in the humbuckers. Every humbucker guitar here is the same wind. Every P90 is the same one. It brings out the voice of each guitar, and it just does it time after time again. I mean, every set we get is consistently great. So we just, I love the guy. He does great work for us. Cool. Well, thanks for showing us these. Where can people go to find out more about them online? Uh, Cowerguitars.com. So that's K-A-U-E-R. Cool. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, no sweat. Thanks for watching PremierGuitar.com.